so our final presentation now is from Dr. Sean Haas and Dr. James P. Frazee from San Diego State University. Uh, Sean is Director of Instructional Technology Services at San Diego State University. He provides operational leadership and direction for applications, initiatives, infrastructure training and support services across the broad spectrum of instructional technology functions. And James serves as the Deputy Chief Information Officer and Senior Associate Vice President for Learning Environments, Technologies and User Services at San Diego State University. Thank you so much to the both of you for being here today. Thanks so much for having us, Stephanie. Um, we're, we're happy to share our screen, but I think we still have a screen share going on from the last presenter. Oh yeah, uh, I think that might be Zaid. Zaid, do you mind unsharing your screen, please? Oh, that was my bad, sorry. <laughs> All right, are you seeing our slides okay? Uh, no, I don't see anything. Okay, let me try that again. We're a Zoom campus, so Teams is a little <laughs> foreign to us, sorry. Let's see, I'll try it one more time. But Stephanie, do you have the slides as well, just in case? Yeah, we do. So we can give it one more time, and if it doesn't work, we can share it for you. Perfect, thank you. Let me try sharing the entire screen. Can you see that now? Uh, no, we're still not seeing anything. Okay. Yeah, it may not be working. We're using the browser mode of Teams, so if you wouldn't mind sharing that, okay. replies, that would be awesome. Yeah, one moment, please. Okay. Yeah, and while she's getting that queued up, this is James. Really want to thank all the presenters. We're learning a lot and feverishly taking notes and <laughs> so much overlap. It's, it's interesting to see how our paths are um, aligning and I think there's a lot of opportunities for us to collaborate. So just super grateful for everyone's time this morning and uh, looking forward to continuing the conversation. And I second that uh, idea of an international forum. So us here in the U.S. can collaborate. Thank you, University of Illinois. You know, and, I'll, and, and while Stephanie's pulling that up, I'll just kind of go through some of the big ideas that we're hoping to discuss this morning. You know, one is just the use of, um, and this is a term, you know, that's a term of art that's really, I think, um, prevalent in EDUCAUSE, you know, for those of you who are familiar with EDUCAUSE, which is a big organization for IT and higher education here in the U.S., is extended reality, which is really encompassing augmented reality, mixed reality, like the Magic Leap headset you see here. Um, this is uh, Danny, one of our electrical engineering undergrad students who works with us here in the IT division. Um, by the way, we just got a big uh, donation in partnership with Magic Leap. We've got 111 Magic Leap headsets. So doing some really interesting uh, work with them and our School of Nursing in particular. We can talk more about that. But um, some of the big ideas is just in terms of um, the need to use these tools to improve teaching and learning. We're gonna talk about how we're doing that, um, how we feel like there's an opportunity for more rigorous empirical research, studying the impact of these tools. There's been a dearth of research. so. Um, we're talking today about the Vital Research Center. It's a um, new research center at San Diego State. It has been um, formally approved as a research center, the first um, research center, in fact, at San Diego State University that's not embedded within a college. So it is a truly a multidisciplinary research center. And the focus is on using these technologies, again, the full array from augmented reality through virtual reality to improve teaching and learning. So um, let's go to that next slide. Um, this is gonna be old hat uh, for you, um, which is just you know, our adaptation of a timeless quote. We really feel like this has the opportunity to emotionally engage learners in a way that's never been possible before. Uh, and that's something, especially um, in uh, situations and scenarios that would be too dangerous or expensive to do otherwise, uh, or impossible, I should say, to do otherwise. So that's been uh, really a driver for us. Let's go to that next slide. I want to point out the, um, the breadth of uh, use of virtual immersive teaching and learning here at San Diego State University. Um, all of our colleges are now involved. Um, from you know, lower division general education courses to doctoral level courses, 
Um, we've got faculty from um, a variety of domains and disciplines working with us. Again, the focus of this research center is generating um, scholarly um, studies to show what we're learning uh, about this work. Um, we're actively involving student organizations, really excited about those partnership opportunities. Um, so we're working with students to promote experimentation and to provide faculty with lots of examples. That's the one thing that I think is the most important thing we can do with our faculty is provide them with lots of examples about how they might take advantage of these technologies for teaching. So um, the other thing you know, that's really important, in fact, uh, relevant to the work we've done with our student organization, you can go to that next slide too, um, is the fact that um, students are co-creators. We've had, heard some of our other speakers talk about this. Um, we want to counterbalance the um, corporate content creation that we see out there today. Um, so not only are we consuming off the shelf content, but we're, we're also creating content. So um, the students in the organization you see um, on this image here have worked with faculty from astronomy, with um, electrical engineering um, and other disciplines to create content uh, to help them with historically challenging uh, subject matter within, let's say, their principles of astronomy course. Uh, so those students, often first-generation college students, um, are influencing the generation of this content creation here at San Diego State. So that's something really exciting um, and something that we're trying to encourage with our faculty is to work with these students. In fact, this organization got paid in pizza by the chair of the astronomy department. We provide the space there in um, the Vital Research Center right now in that image. And, uh, and the chair of the astronomy department would literally walk in with a stack of, of pizzas every Friday. And we had to kick the students out at the end of the day because they were so engaged in the work that they were doing. So if we go to that next slide, you'll see um, how that's paying off for our students. Um, those students have been involved uh, in a variety of opportunities to work with faculty and with professional organizations, which is often led to uh, positions. In fact, all of those logos you see on the bottom of your screen are corporations that have hired our students that have, um, I think, had a really robust portfolio as a result of the work that we've done with the Virtual Immersive Teaching and Learning Research Center. Uh, and so, you know, some of these students, we have one student who's um, now working for Amazon, who's making probably three times as much as Sean and I combined, and the kid's like 19 years old and graduated from college early uh, here. So it's really about, you know, that opportunity for students to have um, experiences that will serve them world well in the world outside of school as well. So as, if we, as we keep going through the slide deck here, Stephanie, the one thing that I want to point out that's super exciting is the opportunity for us to align this with our strategic priorities at the institution. So one of the strategic priorities at San Diego State is equity and inclusion in everything we do. And one of the ways uh, that we're building on that cornerstone of our strategic plan is through an initiative we call the Empathy Lens. And the Empathy Lens is really meant to provide students with opportunities for um, experiencing what it's like to be um, in someone else's shoes. And so we're working, for instance, we have a scenario, one that we're in development on right now is actually a faculty hiring committee scenario. So this one is actually geared towards faculty, not students so much. So faculty um, will go through this experience of what it's like to be on a hiring committee and they get to sit in the seat of a candidate. They get to seat, sit in the seat of the chair of that search committee. And they get to um, experience microaggressions and implicit bias and other things um, that you know, majority groups don't often get to experience. Uh, and it, it really creates space for difficult conversations. And I should say with a lot of the, the work we're doing, it's not so much about the technology it's really about the space this creates for the conversations, but that doesn't happen without really solid pedagogy. And so you have to have pre and post activities to um, make sure that people are unpacking those experiences. And so that's something that we're really excited about and we're trying to measure the impact of in terms of behavior change and how this is impacting learners. And so that's one of the things that we wanted to 
gather from you all here today is any instrumentation, focus group protocols, or other instrumentation that we can build on either swallow whole or adapt to measure the impact of the use of these technologies. So um, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Sean, to take it from here. Thanks, James. And Stephanie, if we can go to the next slide. Um, so hearkening back to that uh, core uh, strategic initiative of ours, which is diversity and inclusion in everything we do, this project was really framed around bringing uh, standardized patients, which are a resource that our uh, San Diego campus has limited access to and our other campuses, including the rural Imperial Valley campus have uh, no access to. So we partnered with these institutions here um, on the screen, Claremont Graduate University, where uh, myself and another doctoral student were enrolled at the time, Texas Tech, Microsoft and Pearson to uh, create this virtual standardized patient. And James mentioned um, research instruments. We use the ARCS model and specifically the IMMS survey, which is the Instructional Materials Motivation Survey. Um, to measure student motivation to learn uh, compared with other more conventional uh, methods, including reading a case study, uh, 2D VR, as well as this immersive um, augmented and mixed reality. And, and we also looked, um, another doctoral student looked at uh, nursing skills gains and outcomes. And we found that um, not surprisingly, mixed reality was far more engaging as measured, as measured by the ARCS model. Um, ARC stands for attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. And in particular, attention and satisfaction were greatly increased, which again is no surprise given that uh, there's no distractions when you're looking through a headset. Um, you'll also see on, in the image on the right that uh, we, we were able to bring these virtual standardized patient holographic videos right into the clinical space, which was an interesting juxtaposition compared with the uh, plastic kind of low tech mannequins uh, that are surrounding this patient. And again, if, going back to the equity point, while the HoloLens is not a cheap device, it is very inexpensive compared to the uh, multi-million dollar simulation labs that are required for nursing simulation uh, per traditional modalities and that many institutions don't have. Um, so we can certainly speak about this more in the panel, but on the next slide, um, getting further into the democratization of, of this content. Um, that previous uh, scenario was captured in Microsoft's uh, headquarters in Redmond, Washington. Um, we're now working with photogrammetry to capture content like this pine cone um, using uh, cell phones as well as cell phone cameras, as well as um, high-end uh, digital cameras. So um, this, enables faculty uh, starting in our um, Department of Biology in both botany and um, biology to create their own content. And we're also partnering with them to create high resolution uh, 3D models just from images. So there's a uh, software called Agisoft uh, Metashape that just stitches the images together and creates a 3D mesh that is pretty remarkable, both in 2D mobile um, AR as well as uh, VR and AR headsets like the Magic Leap. And I, and I want to just clear up something I see in the chat that is um, kind of stunning to me. Um, that is not true. San Diego State's empathy program, you might be confusing South Dakota State University, which is um, the other SDSU um, with San Diego State. Um, so I, I don't know what that is. All oh, actually, about. it looks like UCSD, which is oh. another campus in Sa University of California, San Diego. Yeah. Anyway, we can chat. It's not more. San Diego State. Yeah. So I don't even know who that is. Yeah. Um, but well, happy to chat more about that. <laughs> Interesting. Odd. Anyway, uh, back to the uh, open educational extended reality library. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, it's it started here in our um, biology department and actually began as a tool for um, a particular instructor who had developed a sensitivity to formaldehyde. Um, so she was no longer able to work with uh, physical lab specimens. So pre-COVID, uh, we worked with her to develop this um, comprehensive library of the uh, skeletal and, and soft tissues that she used in her class, which became very relevant in 2020 with the onset of the pandemic and is now being uh, modeled as an exemplar with the Horizon Report last year in 2021 for open educational resources, kind of next generation, I think in the two to three year horizon is where they classified that. And we're collaborating with the California State University system with 23 campuses and over 475,000 students. And speaking of students, I want to give a shout out to Stephanie, who's an alumna of SDSU. So I think that's how we got connected, but also 
I, I saw some eyebrows raised when we mentioned 111 Magic Leaves. Peggy Johnson is also an alum of FJCU. So definitely that uh, millions of students across our uh, alumni network is, is really um, beneficial to this endeavor. And I know we're running short on time. So just want to mention this is device agnostic uh, to James's point about, um, you know, counterbalancing the uh, meta and all the other corporate funding going into this. And it's also interactive and cool. Um, and then I'll quickly talk on the next slide just to uh, reinforce the, the scope here. This is really with an eye on one SDSU, which is another element of our strategic plan um, with our four campuses as well as the 23 campuses of the CSU. And on that note, I'll turn yeah. it back to James. Last, last slide here, um, Stephanie, if you, if you go to this, is this is Mission Valley, which is in the heart of San Diego. Um, this is the former home of the San Diego Chargers. Boo, boo, they're in Los Angeles now for our uh, US uh, uh, colleagues here. They're probably familiar with the National Football League, right? So anyway, San Diego State now has that 166 acres of prime real estate right in the heart of the city where we're building an innovation district. And that is gonna be the hub of where we're taking this vital research center work next. And so we're working on partnerships with companies like Qualcomm. They've actually named the football stadium here. This is a much smaller stadium for our San Diego State football team. Um, Snapdragon Stadium. Snapdragon is a processor that Microsoft, excuse me, that Qualcomm has created. So that's going to be kind of an anchor tenant in that area. But it's a really exciting opportunity for us to be partnering uh, with you all as we look to the build out of that site. Uh, and we're going to be doing a lot of content creation. In fact, we're conceptualizing now a holographic video uh, creation studio for that space that we would be leasing out to uh, corporate partners, um, specifically in the healthcare industry. San Diego is the home of a lot of biotechnology uh, work, and we're looking forward to uh, taking advantage of this opportunity in Mission Valley. So super excited about that and would love to, to partner with other campuses here on this call as we look forward. So thank you so much. Really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, James and Sean. Um, uh, that was a really amazing talk and I can just see all the amazing opportunities that are there for students now. Uh, and hopefully out of today's seminar, there'll be future collaborations with people on this call. <laughs>